Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want full course for any actual subject, visit theactualguy.com or WhatsApp on this number. Thank you. Now, let's talk about the wrong reasons to study actual science because a lot of people come into actual science for all the wrong reasons, right? The first wrong reason is I want to earn a one crore uh, per annum package. So somehow over the years, uh, coaching institutes have spread this misinformation that uh, uh, the minimum sort of pay scale for an actuary is one crore rupees per annum. This is definitely exaggerated, right? It doesn't represent the reality. And we will talk about what the realistic pay scales for actuaries are. They make decent money. They uh, earn a good living, but uh, it's definitely not one crore for everyone, right? So that's a myth. Don't enter if you are coming expecting uh, one crore from day one, right? Second, uh, if you want to work in investment banking, private equity, actuarial science uh, is probably not the way to go, right? A lot of uh, people fascinated with finance come into actuarial science, uh, but the reality of the matter is that hardly any actuaries work in investment banking, private equity. In the front end roles of investment banking, private equity, you would only find MBAs. And in the back-end roles, as I told you, you would find uh, more quantitative professionals uh, such as masters and PhDs in physics, economics, uh, statistics, mathematics, etc. And engineers, right? A lot of engineers, right? So actuarial science can be relevant there in the back office roles of investment banks where you're pricing derivatives, modeling risk and all of that. But uh, it is still some time uh, before a lot of actuaries uh, start working there, right? Uh, the third reason is I want to do something unique. Now, obviously, a lot of uh, old age professions such as doctor, engineer, chartered accountant, so on and so forth are now saturated in India. So people think like, uh, I want to do something unique. Uh, actuarial science is something unheard of. Let's just get into it. This is not a good enough reason to get into actuarial science. Uh, once you come into actuarial science, you will realize that it's a very niche profession. It's only required for a small industry that is insurance. Although that ins industry is growing very fast, uh, the, the demand and supply of actuarial science is similar to what you would find in uh, a lot of other professions, right? And uh, we don't need as many actuaries in the economy as we do doctors, engineers or uh, chartered accountants, right? So it will always stay a niche profession. It is meant for only those who are passionate about mathematics. Just because you want to do something unique, I don't think you should start actuarial science unless you are really passionate about mathematics. Uh, I want my CV to look good. I will do an MBA later. So this is another reason I hear a lot for uh, people starting actuarial science. Uh, Actuarial science is a very long-term commitment. It only gives you a great return if you finish it completely, right? Because that is where uh, really good opportunities start coming to you. Uh, finishing means passing all the 13 exams. We'll talk about exams in uh, one of the later slides. If your goal is to go for uh, an MBA later, I would say that uh, you should uh, focus on... Uh, uh, working in real world jobs where you can uh, understand uh, businesses well and sort of uh, get in get a flavor of uh, how a different real world businesses operate rather than jumping into a uh, quantitative domain like actuarial science. It will make your CV stand out a bit, but uh, the effort is a lot. Uh, just because you want to do an MBA and you want your CV to look do or to look good, I don't think it's a good enough reason to do actuarial science. Uh, my relative is an actuary. A lot of people come into actuarial science because uh, they have an uncle or a cousin who is an actuary. Uh, that's not a good enough reason. You should come in only if you have a passion for the subjects, not because a relative is an actuary. Uh, my parents want me to. A lot of uh, people come into this profession uh, and men go into many other professions because their parents uh, sort of uh, force them to or uh, have an expectation that they will do it. I don't think that's a good enough reason. See, it will take you almost 
फाइव टू एट ईयर्स टू कंप्लीट एक्चुअल साइंस दैट इज द एवरेज ड्यूरेशन टू स्टडी समथिंग फॉर फाइव टू एट ईयर्स टू गिव द रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ टू इट एज अ प्रोफेशन यू शुडेंट डू इट बिकॉज someone else is expecting to uh, it from you or because it's unique to do if you do so you will just end up uh, you know feeling unsatisfied for the rest of your life if you are not happy with your job it's not very difficult to uh, make a good living in almost any good profession like chartered accountancy like data science like actuarial science like investment banking like management consulting all of these professions right they make good money uh and eventually reach around the same ballpark what is eventually going to matter is how much you enjoy your work and it also gets really difficult to pass exams alongside a full time job so you can only uh you know do it if you really enjoy the subjects otherwise you will get very drained right you might end up in this sort of a uh, uh, scenario where it feels like pushing a boulder up a hill uh, you start for the 1 crore package but in 5 years uh, you still have eight exams to go and then you feel like you can't do it anymore because a uh, lot of personal uh, responsibilities have come in uh your job is really demanding right it will be- become very difficult not enough people talk about how difficult it is to uh, write exams alongside a full time job so only do it if you are passionate about mathematics and when i say mathematics i don't mean arithmetic okay you don't need to be uh, good at calculations okay uh, that is not what matters uh because a lot of people say i have a love for numbers uh love for numbers is what is not needed here love for logic is needed okay if uh, you know you enjoy uh converting problems into logical frameworks and then solving them if you enjoy uh, understanding where do mathematical formula come from what is the intuition behind them uh if you enjoy uh you know uh, calculus and uh, permutation combinations probability kind of problems right uh if uh, you know you enjoy solving algebra and sequence and series if you enjoy that sort of mathematics then it is definitely meant for you and then there are other right reasons to study actuarial science as well uh love for mathematics is one but you also should want to uh, do quantitative problem solving for a living right so desire for uh, love for mathematics and a desire to apply it for a living is important right and then another very good reason to do actuarial science is that uh, insurance in india as an industry has a lot of upside potential so there's a lot of opportunity to disrupt and create a huge impact right uh, finally the insure tech revolution is uh, you know on its uh rise right now so if you want to disrupt a very traditional in- industry that is insurance uh this is the right time to act- enter actuarial science and uh, sort of start contributing towards this uh, disruptive wave right so these are the right reasons to uh, study actuarial science now let's just talk about some popular myths related to actuarial science and the actuarial profession and try to burst them and talk about the truth of them so the first most popular myth is that the actuarial exams are absolutely undoable and very difficult back when i started my actuarial journey in 2015 this is what uh, the popular notion was that uh, uh you will be competing with the uh, statistics uh, masters mathematics masters phd's and all of those people so these exams will be uh, almost undoable uh the fact of the matter is that while the material is uh, very interesting and very intellectually stimulating and that is what uh, makes the course worth doing uh the exams have a fairly decent pass percentage so for uh, iia you would almost see 25 to 50% pass percentage uh 
so it's been going up over the last uh, couple of years and uh, with ifoa and soa you would see almost a 50 percent pass percentage right so given that uh if you compare that to any of the college entrance exams in india or any uh you know competitive exams uh you would realize that this is a significantly higher pass percentage so the material is very interesting and slightly challenging but the exams are fairly doable the second myth is that you should start studying actual science even if you are not passionate about mathematics a lot of coaching institute uh, tutors end up saying that uh, uh, only the initial exams are mathematical the later exams are uh, not very mathematical so just start it get done with it somehow right uh, that is a strategy to just get more students into the profession and enrolled into their courses the reality is that while only the first few exams are mathematically rigorous they form as the basis for further exams and the work we do so inherently for the rest of your life all of the work you are going to be doing in the actual profession would be largely quantitative right uh, even if uh, you are able to sail through the initial uh, exams somehow uh, if you are not into mathematics you are going to hate your work right so that's not a good position to be in also a lot of times what i've seen is that people pass all of their exams but are left with cs2 or cm2 as their last exam right so that is the position you can be stuck in right? so i think you should only start actual science if you are really interested in mathematics being good at it is not a requirement you can learn it but being uh, interested and passionate is uh, definitely important the third myth is that actuaries make one crore from day one right so this is a pay scale that has been propagated by uh, people with vested interest particularly coaching institutes uh, that is not true a fresher who has uh, just passed two to seven exams and is starting with their first job after an internship typically makes six to ten lakh rupees per annum and a freshly qualified fellow actuary uh, with three to five years of experience and all the 13 exams done makes about 20 to 30 lakh rupees per annum and after this point it grows at 15 uh, to 20 percent per annum right so this is a more realistic pay scale uh, we'll talk about pay scale in a bit more detail in uh, one of the coming slides uh, myth four is you should not over qualify and pass too many exams with your undergraduate degree so a lot of people would tell you don't do uh, you know all the cmcs cb exams don't do the cp exams the fact of the matter is that you should pass as many exams as possible alongside your bachelor's degree ideally you should get done with all the cmcs cb exams and if you can also finish up the cp exams or at least study for the cp exams uh firstly this really helps uh in terms of making your job life easy in the first few years where your workload can be high where uh, the employer expectations can be uh, slightly high uh, you may not get time to study because you're just learning to juggle uh, a full-time job right uh, adjusting in a new work environment so what really makes sense is that you get done with most of your exams with college and uh, then just write your sp and sa exams alongside your job based on whatever uh, specialization you pick uh, that does not mean that you should uh, pressure yourself to pass too many exams but it's generally a good idea secondly over qualification is a complete myth it's only the employers who do not have good quality work that uh, do not shortlist uh, candidates with a lot of exam progression uh, because they are afraid that if this person comes in they will leave very uh, quickly because they will get opportunities outside because they have a lot of exams right because this is a good candidate so bad employers don't want good candidates because uh, uh, they cannot uh, trap them for a long time right uh, thus passing a good number of exams ensures that you are only shortlisted by good employers and get good quality work so these are some of the myths don't fall for them now let's talk about the 
actuarial pay scales that you can get in India. We have talked about this briefly in the previous slide. Uh, as soon as you pass out of uh, the college, you have to do an internship, a uh, three to six month internship where you will get a stipend of about 20,000 rupees per annum. Almost in all scenarios, uh, candidates have to do an internship before they land a full time job unless they are able to get a campus placement uh, directly in an actual job from their college. Some actual employers visit uh, colleges uh, and hire directly from there. Uh, so once you're done with the internship, your first job, if you have two to seven exams and you don't have any experience, the first job will pay you just five to 10 lakh rupees per annum. Uh, then you grow really fast from there. If you maintain a good exam progression, if you have 10 uh, exams passed and uh, two or more years of experience, you get 12 to 15 lakh rupees per annum easily. Uh, once you qualify as a fellow actuary, you get to 20 to 30 lakh rupees per annum. And uh, once you have more than seven years of experience, you get to 40 to 50 lakh rupees per annum, right? And beyond this point, you just grow uh, at 15 to 20 percent per annum, right? So expect to get to that one crore level in about uh, uh, 12 to 15 years right if that's what you're aiming for right uh, that's the idea